I'm Josh Cooperwood, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, and you up next. Keep the queens go hard. Rise the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Chill. SLT Nation! Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next, a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. KT, it is season three and the lights are about to be turned off. We had the two minute warning and season three is getting for basketball is here now. We are doing impressive things, but listen. This show is all about KT and I finding rising stars, future phenoms who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And today we got a very special one for y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all why this is special. Season two, for those of you who've been rocking with Sports Life Talk for a super long time, y'all know we went to the University of Memphis. We had Coach Abby on the show. Well, guess what? That, that whole staff. Katrina May Merriweather was promoted up to Cincinnati. So now Memphis brings in a whole new crew. And guess what? We get to get in with the new crew. And we got one of the coaches, one of the assistant coaches, the one of the recruiting coordinators over there, assistant coach. He's got 12 years in the game. You can you can tell he kind of got that former hooper, that little swag about him. You know what I'm saying? I can tell this man can go get a bucket any which way he wanted at any point in time. But let's make some noise for the Tennessee State alone. Coach Josh. Cooper Wood! <laughs> Coach Coop! You know we gotta call you Coach Coop on this thing. How you doing today, man? No doubt I'm doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. I like I like the office, man. I, I'm digging the I'm digging the scene. I'm digging the vibes up in the uh in the Memphis offices back there. Y'all got the flags and it's looking cold. It's looking ga- gangster up in there. Oh yeah, it, it's swagged out. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Well, check this out, Memphis, for our second time being back on campus. I am your host, the mouth of the South B. Jones, the OG All Things Louisiana. Mo, put your L's up. Mr. Yeet is in the building. I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, the other side of the logo, the choir storm. The head coach, KT. Kev, how you feeling today, man? It always feels good to go to Memphis, B. Jones. Do you know why? Oh Memphis, oh well, Tennessee. Not, oh not, what? What? Not because of your singing. It's the home of one of my favorite. Well, my favorite basketball player ever, B. Jones. And you know what that is? Penny Hardaway, man. So, uh, Coach, is there a way you can just say, "Hey, Penny"? My boy KT said, "What's up, man? Can you do that for me, Coach?" I got you. I'm gonna go check him out in practice tomorrow. I'm gonna let him know. B. Coach, Jones is over. He begged with the old staff to get it done too, Coach. So hopefully, hopefully well, I you- didn't beg. I just. <laughs> ass like real like you know tearfully but yeah, yeah, yeah i'm doing great man let's turn up and show memphis how we really do it all right well y'all heard the head coach so coach this is what we need you to do coach coop we need you to reach over your right shoulder and we need you to take your hand and we need you to bring that strap down because it buckle up because this is about to be a fun ride we're gonna have a great episode here for y'all today uh listen before we get started we got to do the infamous three things that all podcasters <laughs> and all youtubes and say oh, they do it all the time so you know what you got to do we need y'all help i just want to first and foremost say 2023 has been a blessing it's been a gift the takeover has been amazing we've been all around this country the support and the, uh the public support has just been just incredible but we need your help we want to keep growing our community and growing this platform bigger and better so we can keep telling more incredible stories so on the count of three we need you to do those three things one hit that hit that subscribe button become a part of this community number two hit that like button so this show will just bubble up in the algorithm all the way to the top and then number three 
Sharing is caring. It's holiday season. It's about to get cold outside. Share this show with somebody. So while they working out, while they on their drive to work, they can listen to these great, incredible stories. Coach Coop, is, is, is Memphis going to rock with us? Is okay. Memphis going to rock with us? Most definitely. We rocking with y'all. Most All right. Definitely. Here we go. Let's do it like we true to it. On the count of three. Make some noise. One, two, three. Boo! Yeah, baby. Welcome to the Sports Light Talk family. That's right. KT and I don't do fans. We don't do followers. Y'all, we leave that to all them other sports podcasts. We do family around here. So if you did any of those three things, drop us a fire emoji in the chat. Let us know so we can just personally reach out and just say thank you because that's how much it means to us. We are that sincere and that serious about growing this thing and having you to be a part of this journey. All right, Coach Josh Cooper Wood. Hey, come show, show me, show me that Jay. Show me that Jay. Cause I don't know that why. I feel, I, feel, I feel like you can get loose at any point in time. We go, we gonna test it today. All right, Coach Cooper, what are you ready for the sports life talk initiation? Oh, no, doubt. no doubt, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, Coach, to initiate you into the SLT family. You got to give us your top five music artists. Oh, that's easy, man. One, I'm going with Lil Wayne. Uh, two, A Ball, MJG. Uh, three, Young Buck. Four, Future. And then five, I'm going with Lil Baby. Bruh, bruh, Coach Cooper Wood. Coach Cooper Wood. Hey, I'm a huge Young Buck fan. I think he probably one of the most underrated MCs in the game. And Orange Mound, holla at your boy, Eight Ball and MJG. Oh, my God. I love that list, KT. You, Kevin, you got to ratchet it up on this one. Go, go, go big or go home, KT. Let's go. What you giving him? Bitch, I'm not going to lie. Those first three he said had me fired up. Fire. <laughs> And then that four and five, I was like, Coach, what are you doing? But you know what? This is your show, Coach, and I'm going to show you nothing but love. And plus, I need you to holler at Penny Hardaway for me. So, B. Jones, just for you, you said he's been in the game how long? 12 years, man. So, I don't think 12 is high enough for you, right? No, no, no. I'm not even accepting that. Let's give him 18. We'll give him 18 then. Kevin, it could have went higher with that eight ball and MJG, man. That young no, 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 no. It would have been higher if he didn't have future and whichever baby that he mentioned. So, Coach, <laughs> when we bring you back on the show, I'm going to need that four and five cleaned up a little bit, all right? We got to call out. We got call out. Okay, I guess. I guess. All right, so, but hey, by JG B Jones. Oh, damn boy. Damn yeah, boy. Uh, hey, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be listening to A Ball and MJG all night now. No, no. Hard, go hard. I That's love my all time favorite. It. That's one of my all time favorite tracks. Big clutch. Man, 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 they whole catalog go hard, man. We can talk about them for the rest of this show. That's how cold they are. All right. But who is your favorite superhero and why? I'll probably say Superman. Just you know, he can he can do anything, save anybody. He can he can do anything. So I bet people wonder why B Jones. We ask, why did you ask him his favorite superhero? Yeah. The reason we ask that because we are we see all coaches as superheroes, and as you heard, superheroes help people, and just think all the lives that coaches touch. So with that said, Coach, since you're a superhero, our superhero, what would your theme song be? Uh, probably Lil Wayne or Millie. I'm a limit, limit, limit. Hey, uh, I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. Yeah, I'm a beast. I'm a police. Yeah, I like or, that. Or, or young bug shorty want to ride. Shorty want to ride. Ride. ride with me. Hey, we can we get, get low. low. I'm loving this episode. I'm I'm loving go. Go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, yeah, buddy. Slow. Please don't be Jones. I can't do the show without you. All right, Coach. So if you could shadow anyone for a week and learn from them, they could be either dead or alive. Who would it be and why? Uh, I would say uh, Nolan Richardson. Uh, I played for his son. He was my college coach at Tennessee State, Nolan Richardson III. And uh, when Nolan kind of went through his situation in Arkansas and kind of stepped away and retired, he came around our program and was kind of like a... a volunteer co coach or uh consultant for his son and he was just man very knowledgeable of the game uh and whenever he was around uh man like my confidence was through the roof and i just kind of always liked him coaching arkansas uh like how his teams play uh and i would i would really want to shadow notes uh 
later in my life. Goat. That Goat. dude. Yeah, absolutely. He was huge for the college game. That squad he had, too, was mean, too. Oh, Goodness. Yeah. All right, Coach. So what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Uh, just being humble. Uh, being humble and try to always never get uh, too high, too low. You know, because the game has a has a crazy way of, of humbling you if you uh, not true to true to yourself. All right. So, Coach, I I don't know if B Jones asked you this one. He probably didn't. Do you plan on being a head coach anytime in the future? Uh, you know, I thought about it. You know, and that's you know, if it happens, it happens. I'm not. I'm not one of those people that kind of press the issue. You know, I just kind of live my life and go with the flow. So if that's what's in store for me, I mean, I'm prepared. You know, I'm more than prepared if that's what's what's in store for me. All right. So I hope you're prepared for this question. And that's why I asked you that. <laughs> so I want you to pretend that you're a head coach now. And you said that uh, your favorite superhero was Superman. You know, he's a part of the Justice League and Justice League Assemble. I want you to assemble your dream coaching staff, but I'm only giving you three spots. It's you and three other people, and it could be anybody. Who you got? One, I'm going to probably say uh, a guy I used to coach at Vanderbilt, spent some time in the NBA, a guy named Jan Van Bredikoff, uh, a brilliant, brilliant uh, offensive mind. Um, I would surround myself, him one. Um Two would probably be a young lady named Chelsea Hudson. Uh, she played for us at Tennessee State. Um, she's a head junior college coach now um, at Panola uh, College Juco down in Texas. And then third, uh, probably a young lady that's on staff with us here at Memphis. You know, we got three or four uh, young and upcoming coaches. So, I would, you know, opportunity presented itself. You know, one of one of those young ladies. Is it Coach Bay? Is that the one? Is that her name, Coach Bay? Isn't she uh, one of the coaches? Yeah, you got Coach Bays. You have uh, Coach Wyatt, uh, Coach Evans, uh, as well as Coach McKinney. So, you know, any one of those. Yeah, Coach Bay came to my mind because I was just on Instagram and she popped up. I was like, okay, yeah, we're going to go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so Coach, B. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> B. Jones and I, we're going to produce a movie centered around you. The one thing that we're missing is a lead actor. Who should we get to play you in the story of your life? Oh, uh, man, you got to go with Denzel all day. <laughs> you got to go with Denzel. <laughs> hey, every time somebody say Denzel, now I think about Jamie Foxx and Denzel. He, 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 get your ass. <laughs> I can't help but laughing. Okay. Jamie, I, I, well, what about Jamie Foxx? Well, I don't think we can afford either one, but no, uh, I don't think we can afford either one of them. So yeah, we're going to yeah. go with Denzel. Holler at your boys. <laughs> all right, Joe. So this is probably the most important question I'm going to ask you during the initiation, all right? Okay. B. Jones and I, we love to travel. We plan on coming down there to watch y'all play. But before a game, what's that one go-to restaurant that we got to go to in Memphis that gets your stamp of approval? And what is your go-to meal there? I'm going to probably say Rendezvous downtown, some barbecue place. You got to get dry rub ribs, man. They're pretty, pretty legit. You, you'll, be, uh, you'll be satisfied. You eat there before the game, you might not make it to the game. You might be asleep. Well, we're going to catch you a eat there like, yeah, 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 we're going to do something ahead of time. No, we're going to be there the whole game, sleep or not. All right, so now it's time for the You Got Next offer. We're passing our collection plates around and asking you to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. Leave us your top five, your theme song, and your favorite place to eat in Memphis or wherever. And finally, go to our website, sltugotnext.com, to learn more about us and the other You Got Next family members. Now allow me to turn over to B if we learn more about our newest family member, our new play cousin, Josh Cooperwood. So, B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. Shawty want to ride with me. Hey. Ride with me. Hey, coach, I'm going to be on that all night long. I'm going to be on that joint all night long. I absolutely love Young Buck, man. He, he part of my workout playlist. So, uh, so we might we might have something in common. But, Coach Josh Cooperwood, welcome to the show. It's super exciting about being in Memphis. It's something special that's brewing. I love the court. I love the energy. I love it's like it's like a it's like a new wave of uh, of energy that's coming through that Memphis doors. And I, I'm hoping that you can you can tell us all about it. 
here on the show today. But let's take this name back to the beginning, Coach Coop, because you a hooper. And when we had, we had hoopers on the show, the conversation just seemed to go a little bit differently. But, Coach, tell us what made you fall in love with the game of basketball and when did you start playing it? Uh, I, probably, I started playing at a young age, probably uh, organized seven or eight in the little leagues. Uh, didn't really get good, maybe I would say. Uh, middle school, seventh, eighth grade years when I started to see my talent excel and then on into high school. So, so no, 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 we're going to talk a lot of women's basketball on this, but you but you were like a dog, man. It looked like you had the opportunity to take it to the next level and you played college basketball. I, I guess I was I was a pretty good player during my time. Did, did you ever play overseas? I played for eight years. Yeah, that's why. Okay, all right. You know, the re research <laughs> didn't get me right on that one. So, so man, you you got to tell us what was it like for you playing overseas? Because I heard the standards for Americans is like crazy. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty good. Uh, back in uh, finished college in two thousand three, uh, so I started uh, my journey over in Israel. Uh, and back then, I think you could have uh, three Americans on a team or three foreign players, so you could have two Americans, another European from another country. Uh, and they, they, you know, during that time, they expected you to uh, do a lot of the workload. You know, if you, if you was a guard, you know, you needed to be scoring some points. If you were a big man, you needed to be scoring, rebounding the ball. Uh, so you, you were there for a specific reason. And, you know, you could be cut at any time. Any time. That's crazy. You know, if, yeah, if you're not if you're not doing your job, I mean, there's nothing in Europe, you know, to be in practice and they bring in another American. And if he bought you the same size, <laughs> <laughs> that means had, had, mean had to practice. You're going to have to go meet with the GM. And probably hey, you, you're looking, you're looking <laughs> at him sizing them up. Uh, yeah. oh, oh. How, tall, how, how tall are you, coach? I'm like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, okay, okay. So luckily, you know. Uh, eight years, never got cut or released. So, I wow. <laughs> w when did you know you was you were different with basketball, though, Coach? Because I mean, to say you play professional, that's that's a tall task. I mean, it's only a limited amount of jobs is available for for professional basketball players. So, when did you know? When did you realize that you were kind of different with that rock? Probably ninth grade year. Probably going from ninth grade into my tenth grade year. Ninth grade, I was able to play uh, varsity. Um, as a freshman, uh, played with some really good players. So uh, I was maybe 5'10", 5'11", uh, as, a, as a freshman. And then going from my freshman to sophomore year, I'm the same height that I am now. So over that summer, I grew three or four inches, still playing the guard spot, uh, What was a good ball handler, uh, could create my own shot, was a really good uh, shooter from the outside, and I also was a pretty good athlete. I could play above the rim, so uh, I was a complete player. Now, when did a coach from Cashville, Tennessee, re realize that he wanted to become a, a coach? And when did when did you make that switch and, and decide, like, hey, I want to give back to the game, and I'm t I want to put the ball down, and now I want to actually become a coach? Yeah, it was crazy because my whole career, like, I never really – thought about being a coach um, when I left Tennessee State. Uh, probably going to my junior year, I kind of changed my major. And when I did that, um, I was going to need an extra year um, to graduate. And so uh, academics were never my strong point. I'm not afraid to say that. And so, uh, you know, my mother would always uh, speak to me about going back to school, finishing my degree. So my calling in the coaching was simply when I finished playing, I went back to my alma mater. Uh, I was a, a, a graduate assistant for the men's program. Uh, although I didn't have my undergraduate degree, I was a GA, but finishing up my undergraduate degree. And I kind of, you know, fell in love with it then and, you know, really enjoyed it. And that that's what started the whole coaching deal. 
I, well, I find it interesting because because uh, Kevin and I, you know, our goal is to, to be the voice in the platform for all people of uh, in the women's basketball to come on and tell their stories because we just feel like it's it's so necessary. It's so needed. And, you know, we guys and it's funny because a lot of the females come on there and be like, man, it's so good to see guys in the game. So I always I always get curious and I find it interesting when I see a former hooper and I'm, I'm digging into yours a little bit deeper. But it's just something about the male coaches that I'm like, how, how did they get into it? Like. Like, I know our story is unique, but how about uh, what was your story, Coach Mitchell? I mean, uh, excuse me, Coach Cooperwood. What made you decide to get into women's basketball? Well, it was crazy because at the time, um, the during that year, I was working with the men. Uh, the the following during that during that season, um, they were short a coach on the women's staff, and the opportunity uh, presented itself. And I said, no, I'm not really a fan of girls basketball, women's basketball. You know, after this season is over with and I get my degree, I'm going to go to the men's Final Four and I'm going to try to, you know, get network. A job, network and, you know, get on with a men's program. So I go to the men's Final Four and, uh, you know, had some leads and things like that, but nothing that, that I really wanted came about. <laughs> so I went back to Tennessee State and I said uh, hey is that offer still on the table that, that you guys asked me and it was still there and I told myself you know I'll just try this for a year and still be trying to get a men's job and 12 years later I'm going into my 13th season now I've uh, been on the women's side and I, I don't think I'll ever look back I'd never uh, want to go back on that men's side I just enjoy it and kind of found my niche and and i like what i do i not not do i like it i love it yeah I, you know I, I i love it so well that's that's a pretty interesting story so you've been around for 13 years you've seen the game kind of evolve a little bit i'm a baby i'm still a baby in this thing uh kt how long you've been watching the game kt women's basketball man forever since i was like in middle school high school Okay, don't I see? I like I saw the the Cheryl Swoops versus Katie Smith uh, championship, and then I, I just kind of faded away with it. And Kevin kind of brought me back to it. But uh, but what what do you like about the game? Because I, I know you you talked about being a high riser yourself, so you know about playing above the rim, and you know the young ladies don't have that right. Uh, and, but I'm starting to see it more and more. Young ladies donking and stuff like that is getting kind of crazy with the athleticism in the women's game. But what 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 do you love about the women's game? And how would you how would you say it differentiates? I would say dif differentiates in coaching philosophy, coaching styles, and schemes. I would say on the men's side, of course, obviously they still scout, watch tape, scheme. But on the women's side, you really have to uh, know what you're talking about. You have to watch tape. You got to really. It, it's really more about coaching because yeah, the young ladies are athletic and and they're becoming more and more athletic, you know, but they still are playing. The majority of young ladies are playing below the rim and aren't as athletic as your male players. So you really have to, your game planning, your prep work really, really um, has to be on point. Whereas, you know, the men's side, you got two or three good players or, or guys that are just really athletic and, and super talented. You know, they can do some things and, and cover some ground and, and you'll be okay. Whereas on the, on this side, you know, in my opinion, coaching comes more into aspect. So, so now you got to tell us a little bit about this Memphis team. Cause as I previously mentioned, we had coach Abby jump on. She was part of the staff. That staff moves on. Your crew comes in. Y'all take over this program. What are we going to see out of this new evolution of, of Memphis women's basketball? Uh, you're going to see a team that likes to get up and down the floor uh, we're going to try to get more possessions than our opponents. Uh, that's kind of Coach Simmons' philosophy. Uh, we're coming over from Garden Web, where I think last year we got 70, 78, right, right at 80 possessions a game. Uh, so you're going to see a team that, that likes to get up and down. We're going to press a little bit. Uh, a lot of people today, they like to shoot threes and layups. They don't like to shoot the mid-range, the floaters, the step backs. We like all of that. You know, we're, we're high on skill development. So, we're you know, we're going to put some points on the board. All right. So, it's going to be fast pace. It's going to be it's gonna be crazy kamikaze-style basketball. Now, y'all got some shooters? 
Oh yeah, yeah. We got some shooters, most definitely. I'll say one through uh one through fourteen, even our bigs can step out and shoot the three ball. Kevin, I'm super excited about this Memphis basketball. Now, y- are y'all in the AAC? What what conference are, uh, is uh, Memphis in right now? Yeah, we're in the AAC. We're in the okay. American Athletic Conference. And, and all these conferences is changing. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> it's hard to keep up. Everybody moving. It's going to be new opportunity. But, you know, it's different for football. Everybody talk about conference realignment when they come to football. But basketball is a little bit different. Because all you got to do is get to the dance. And then it's, 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 it's conferences is, is all bets off, right? You just need to make some noise and get to the conference and, I mean, excuse me, into the big dance. And now... You got a shot just like anybody else. But uh but Coach Cooper Wood, you know, we 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 uh we we're not a recruiting show, but we know that it's important that you get an opportunity to FaceTime to pitch your program. So I'm a, I want you to give us 60 seconds. Oh, excuse me, I, you got a minute, but you take as much time as you need. Uh tell us why somebody need to come play for, for Memphis and you and Coach Simmons. I mean, because you, if you look at just the infrastructure of, of Memphis going all the way back to the 60s and 70s i mean it's a basketball town i mean it's it is a basketball town you go back to coach larry finch you know when he played you know took the team to the final four uh penny hardaway derrick rose i mean the list just goes on and on and then if you look at high school girls basketball in the state of tennessee i mean memphis is a place that you know we, we can be the the, the team in the state, you know, where there's no reason. We have everything we need here. You know, we just have good facilities, anybody in the country, you know. So if you want to, you know, come to a place with good, good facilities, first class organization and go win some basketball games and play on the national stage. I mean, come to Memphis. Oh, Memphis. Coach, do y'all still y'all still got that, uh, that, that shop that sell them butter cookies downtown? I'm pretty sure I haven't found it, but I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh my is. goodness, man! I gotta find somebody from Memphis. Please put the name of that business, man. We drove through Memphis, and uh, we stopped somewhere. It's just they had these butter cookies, and it was just absolutely amazing. I'm telling you, that that's the reason to go to Memphis University, right there. Them butter cookies <laughs> on your side, of, on your side of the thing. All right, coach, you ready to have a little bit of fun? You ready Let's to talk a little? All right. Coach Josh Cooperwood, welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show with KT and I. We take the gloves off. We're going to do a little bit of one-on-one. I guess we put the gloves on. We're going to have a little fun. And you are now officially calling all the shots, okay? So have you ever played a game called Would You Rather before? No, I haven't. It's super simple, Coach. Both KT and I are going to give you some some complex. <laughs> we're going to give you a complex pitch or a scenario. Whichever one of those pitches make the most sense to you, we want you to select it. That host will get a point. The first host will get two points, or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. Now, for those of you who've been following faithfully, you know I'm on KT neck right now. I am the defending champion. I won like the last two or three. I'm dominating. It's something about that 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 fall calm. And then I just I just go to a different level with. Oh, it. will you just hurry up and get to the question? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so y'all y'all got to keep rooting for your boy to do this. All right, here we go, Coach Josh Cooper with round number one. Would you rather get the opportunity to take over the head coaching position at Tennessee State? On the, on the women's side, and you get to retire as a Hall of Famer, or you get to coach a player that you recruited that no one gave them a chance. They make it to the Basketball Hall of Fame, and then their speech tells you they wouldn't be there without you. Uh... I'm probably going with the head coach on that one. Oh, coach, you had to do the. You got to see, see, coach, coach, and coach doing the uh, the the publicist, the the PR team told coach what to say. <laughs> I just gave you a dream opportunity, coach. <laughs> Hall of Fame coach and career. God, dog. Uh, that was a good one, though. That was a good one. I'm gonna give you credit for that one, coach. You, you took you took that. You got to get a player. That's what you're in the game for, right? You might yeah. not ever get a head coaching, but you here you here to help develop these young ladies in life. So I love that one. All right, it's round all two. About, it's all about the players. It's all about the players. All right, round two. Would you rather travel the world hosting your own food show on YouTube, where you get to interview other college coaches and you know pick their brains while eating at their favorite place to eat in the towns that they coach in, or 
or I have Netflix pull up on campus on Monday morning and we're going to film a Last Chance You style documentary called Oh Memphis and it's going to be hosted by Young Buck. Oh my I'm God. going with you on that one. Going <laughs> Netflix and Young yeah, I mean, what? Young Buck, you want to bring Penny, uh, MJG, Tila? Oh, man, Young Buck going to host the, the, the it, but it's, it's a Netflix documentary, Coach. So, but now we're going to be following your program. We're going to tell y'all story. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going Netflix and Young Buck on that. Let's go. Now, Young Buck, sign up for the show. All right, here we go. So round number three, Coach. We take it away from the mouthpiece. We take it away from all the words and the options. We take it straight to the sneaker game. Now, you being at Memphis, I know y'all know all about the sneaker game. Y'all got some big time sponsorships and uh, y- y'all got some gangster shoes out there. So here we go. On the count of three, KT and I are going to pull up a pair of shoes. As a matter of fact, we are huge sneaker heads. We go live every Wednesday night at uh, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We, we want everybody out there. Y'all can come join us. It's a, it's a two-way fun show. You're actually able to get in the comments. But anyway, I do a segment called The Drop in which I talk about sneakers, okay? So my passion for sneaker heads boiled over into you got next. So without you knowing it, we both selected a pair of sneakers that we think represent you, okay, Coach Coop? Okay. Now on the count of three, I'm gonna count it down. I'm gonna need you to. I'm gonna say hold. I'm gonna need you to say hold that sneaker, okay? Okay. All right. When you say hold that sneaker, we're gonna show you what we got. All right. Here we go, Coach. Count of three. One, two, three. Man, hold that sneaker. Same time, man. Yeah. I'm going with the. I'm going with the Jays. Mouth of the South. <laughs> and still heavyweight champion of the world M O T S. Let's go, Coach Coop. Hey, oh my goodness. Ah, I told y'all. <laughs> It's something special in the vibrations. It's something special out there in the way. We in Memphis. It's going down. And, and I found the name of the cookie shop. It's Makeda's. You ever heard of that, Coach? Oh, yeah, yeah. They still there. Ooh, we. Oh, we alert. Y'all go check out Makeda's. <laughs> Somebody. Well, I, I hope it's closed when we go, B. Jones, so you can't eat now. Send me some cookies, please. All right, here we go, Coach. We talked about your past. We talked a little bit about your professional career. And, but, but what I found most interesting is getting an opportunity to talk about your transition into women's basketball. But now that we fo- we following you, we rocking with you. The title of the show is What's Life Talks. You got next. So what's up next for Coach Josh Cooperwood? Man, I, you know, I really um, enjoy it here. Uh, I am a Nashville native. That's where I grew up at. But I was born here in Memphis. So I, you know, lived here as a kid and my dad lived here. Um, His family's still here. Uh, So right now, man, I'm happy here. You know, and I want to be here as long as I can. And, you know, after that, whatever opportunity presents itself, you know, but for right now, the the next five, six, seven, eight years, I'm, I'm good here in the 901. Man, so coach, what you know? I, I I should have asked you that during during the interview portion, but what is it like coaching at home? I mean, because I mean, you right down the street, you got you got ties. I know you coach some high school there. I mean, like, yeah, how, how, how what was that feeling to get that call from 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 right there down the street from you and say, hey, we want you to come take over a, a vacant seat and a vacant opportunity here? Yeah, so I was with uh I was with Coach Simmons at a Gardner Webb and when uh. When she got the call and, and got the news and let us know, I think I beat her to Memphis. Like I, I was, <laughs> I, I, I was the first person here. Like I didn't waste no time. I got the hell out of Dodge uh, from Gardner Will and, and got here quick, fast, and in a hurry. And was was ready to go to work. I love it. I love it. Hi, right, KT. All right, Coach. You have any shout outs you want to give? Uh. Yeah, I give a shout out to, you know, the head coach, Coach Alex Simmons, uh, my boy Corey Allen, uh, Ron Mercer, Dante Jones, and then your boy Penny Hardaway. Give some se- hey, Ron Mercer, there's some serious uh, shout yeah, out right now. But you know what? Uh, coach Simmons said she was going to come on the show too, Coach. So we got to work on her some more, B. Jones. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. We, we got to get her on then. We got to get her on most definitely. 
her and all the whole coaching Memphis staff, especially the one I mentioned earlier. All right, Coach, so this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. Tell them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, who are you calling out? Who should have next? Uh, I'm going to go with North Carolina Tar Heels assistant coach, Adrian Walters. I think he should have next. He's a guy that I look up to and talk to often, and I think he has a, a really good story to tell. So I'm, I'm saying I'm calling out Coach Adrian Walters at North Carolina. All right, Coach Adrian Walters, you are officially on the clock. Your ticket just got punched. Y'all can see the, the lineup for season four is getting crazy. So, uh, so Coach Adrian, we'll be reaching out to you, and uh, it, we want to have you on the show so you can tell your story. But Coach Josh Cooper Wood, you got next. You the truth, Coach Coop. Man, we enjoyed you so much. You a blessing. I can tell you, like, we got to have a part two of this one because I don't feel like I dug deep enough into your story. It's so much more we left out there but we want to try to do this in a, in a short for format but you're genuine coach you a trailblazer you are icon you are extraordinary and elite you deserve a yeet, yeet. <laughs> oh tennessee hey k michelle gonna reach out to me and gonna be like man don't don't ever say it again, don't do it again. <laughs> k michelle k michelle gonna be like don't do it again don't do it again. don't ever do it again <laughs> now hey thank y'all for watching another fire episode of sports life talks you got next hey we appreciate y'all so much I, I get emotional i get emotional 2023 has been amazing we've had an all-star lineup we've been all over the country we've talked to amazing coaches is amazing out athletes and now is your time to shine to be a part of this incredible journey this rise to the top cream always rise to the top baby stop playing with us and start praying with us we need your love we need your support don't forget to like subscribe share don't forget to go to our social media we all one word ask for us like talk we everywhere we out here and this is our year and if you want to be on the show guess what we thought about that too because me and him we can't find every great story we can't find every single coach that need to be heard so we need you to go to our website slt you got next.com click on the nominate tab tell us a little bit about yourself and why you think you got next and we're going to be reaching out to you and give you an audition for the show it is just that simple now for those of you who was on youtube we appreciate you watching the entire show on youtube but don't forget going forward there is a podcast companion this whole show is in audio format only wherever you listen to podcasts whether that be on spotify or apple Podcasts, you can watch you get you can listen to you got next and all of our uh, over 500 incredible stories uh on the podcast version so definitely check that out and kt what am i missing i feel like i'm missing something i don't know b jones i'm still upset from championship rounds you feel like giving out a t-shirt you want to give out a sports like talk t-shirt today i don't out know why you, I, yeah out of your budget that's fine man go ahead <laughs> i ain't getting on the coach let me down I spent all my, I spent all my, my bad, dog. when he said young buck, I went crazy. I, I spent all my, <laughs> shout they want to ride with me, ride hey. with me. Hey, I lo, hey I'm telling you, I'm a, I'm a huge young buck fan. Come he on. really is. He ain't just, no, he ain't I'm not, He's I'm, not I'm, a, I'm a big young buck fan. As a matter of fact, I don't like 50 cent to this day. Because of how he treated Young Buck. If 50 Cent would have been smart, he would have had the game and Young Buck. You know how, man, there's some dogs. You know how talented the G Unit would have been if they would have kept it. Oh, my goodness. Well, B. Jones, we're not going to talk about 50 Cent because you already know that brother don't lit up on people, man. So, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, it's him. He said it, not not the head coach. Yeah, right, the right. the I, don't, I, I ain't scared of 50 Cent. You All know right. a crazy story about Young Buck, though? What's that? So, we played Little League baseball together. He's a hell of a baseball player. <laughs> And freshman year of basketball, we played high school basketball together. And after that, he kind of, he kind of, kind of dropped out, started rapping, you know, doing his thing. The next time I saw him, he was on a Snoop Dogg's video, his first like big time video. Uh, he had a verse on one of Snoop Dogg's tracks. And I saw him at a gas station. He was in a, uh, he was in a big SUV, man. And he was, that was like his first big break. But you talking about a dude that had a serious game. Like yeah, young, buck, young buck, no, nah, he can hoop for real. Like, yeah. he, like for real, for real. Y young buck going to play in the sports life talk. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, the the basketball game. Yeah, David Brown had up. that boy had a serious game. <laughs> hey, well, young buck, you officially invited, man. All right, KT, take us home, man. Let's go. Well, you said we got to have coach on for part two, right? We got to, man. We got to.
Man, he won't Denzel, and he didn't pick my shoe, B. Jones. <laughs> I don't know. I'm about to think about this one, but no, Coach. Thank you so much for rocking with us, man. Whatever you need from us, please let us know, and we got your back. Man, thank you guys, man. Thank you guys for a, growing the game of women's basketball. Man, that's really huge, man. We got to grow this game as much as we can. Hey, Coach, we handle this stuff like a pimp should. Yeah, <laughs> pimp ball. <laughs> I, 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 B. Jones, I ain't going to lie. I had it ready. If I would have won championship rounds, I was singing the Stomp song, but – Thanks for both. I couldn't see. Hey, you about to get your stone. Hey, oh, I was ready. Hey, Tennessee, we coming up there. We come up there. It's gonna be wild. Hey, Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better and keep dreaming big. Because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet! She was crazy as I knew you had next Cause you always working You always grinding You're in your bag Cause you're always working Like in due time I just I knew you got next Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast the tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah. You got next, yeah. I can feel it. Just like me, you got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time, and you'll see. Cause if you got next, yeah, if you got next, if you got next, then you're just like me. If you got next, if you got next, yeah, if you got next, then you know where to be. I'm talking sports, life, talking this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sports, life, talking this.